Americans. Stand by fighting men of the United Nations. Here is Mail Call, one big package of words and music and laughter delivered to you by the stars from whom you want to hear. An answer to the request you send to Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. Tonight we extend special greetings to the fighting men from the state of Illinois. And standing at the microphone now, to speed this air mail special letter on its way, is a star who is not only a great comedian, but a fine artist. That favorite son of Illinois, the pride of Waukegan, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Hello again, fellas. This is Jack Benny, your postmaster for tonight talking. And I hope that all you guys, wherever you are, enjoy our music talkie letter. And before I forget it, Harry Von Zell, I want to thank you for that lovely introduction. Favorite son of Illinois. The pride of Waukegan. That was really very nice. Harry. Oh, it was nothing, Jack. I'm full of baloney, you know. <laughs> Well, baloney or not, this old ham loved it. <laughs> anyway, I'm proud to be from Illinois. It's a wonderful state. Yes, you're right, Jack. I visited some relatives there last summer. They took me to a beautiful park called uh, Starved Rock. Starved Rock. Oh, yeah, that's near Ottawa. Uh, oh, you know the place? Do I know the place? Well, years ago, I took a girl to Starved Rock on a picnic. There. Oh, I see. That's how the rock got its name. <laughs> Uh, you're wrong there, Harriet. Couldn't have. You see, she brought a wonderful lunch. Two chicken sandwiches, two sweet pickles, two olives, and three hard-boiled eggs. What a battle we had over that extra egg. <laughs> <laughs> romantic, wasn't it, Harry? Romantic? Well, for goodness sake, what's romantic about an egg? Plenty, if you understand about roosters and hens. <laughs> But, you know, being on this program tonight really brings back memories of the good old days back in Waukegan when I was a kid. Yes, I imagine it does. Gosh, I remember one December. There were terrible blizzards and storms. Our roof leaked. We didn't have coal for our stove. Ah, oh, those were the good old days. For the good old days? How do you figure that? We were in Florida for the winter. <laughs> <laughs> but really, Harry, I, I did... We changed that gag the last minute. It was very good. <laughs> Harry, I did have to work hard when I was a kid. I'll never forget my first job in Waukegan. I worked in a livery stable. In a livery stable? Yes, sir. Believe me, I was in there pitching. Every <laughs> <time>. <laughs> Enough of me, Harry. Let's get this mail call underway with a salute to a great suburb of Waukegan, Chicago. The uh, Santa Anita OTC band conducted by Master Sergeant Skinny Ennis playing Chicago.
swell, Skinny. You sounded like Phil Harris on his one good day. <laughs> you and the boys did a great job on Chicago. Ah, the Windy City, the stockyards. It's a bad combination, but a good sound, you know? <laughs> now, fellas, here's a great combination singing Paper Doll, the Delta Rhythm Boys. I want you to meet a guy who is one of our most prolific songwriters. He's turned out such great hits as Blues in the Night, Black Magic, Tangerine, Dearly Beloved, Lazy Bones, Strip Polka, and here he is in person, Johnny Mercer. Well, Johnny, welcome to Mail Call. Well, thanks, Jackson, and hi, men. You know, Brother Betty, that's a pretty big build-up you gave me there. Oh, it was nothing, Johnny, just words. I'm full of baloney, kid, you know. <laughs> well, those kidding, you really deserve a build-up. Songwriting is hard work. Yes, sir, look at me. I'm nothing but skin and bone. You said it. If you ever took that hanger out of your coat, down you'd go, brother. <laughs> well, what's holding you up, Pappy? <laughs> Bobby socks. <laughs> Uh, what are you going to do for us tonight, Johnny? That is, if I may change the subject. Huh? Well, I'd like to do a little tune I just knocked off called G.I. Jive. G.I. Jive, eh? Hit it, Johnny. This is a G.I. Jive. Man alive. It starts with the bugler blow. in your suit, make a salute, boot, after 
after you wash and dress, more or less, you go get your breakfast in a beautiful little cafe they call the Mist. Jack, when you convalesce, out of your seat, into the street, make with the feet. If you're a PCB, your duty is to salute the L I E U T. But if you brush the L I E U T, the M P makes you K P on the Q T. This is the T I D man alive. They give you a private tank that features a little device called Fluid Drive. Jack, after you revive, chunk all your junk back in the trunk, fall on your bunk, clunk. Chunk all your junk back in the trunk and fall on your funk. clunk. Soon you're pouting, Jesus, but before you pound too far, seems to right back digging the G. I Well, Johnny Mercer, really solid if you dig me, Johnson. All right. Thank you, Jackson. By the way, I thought you were supposed to do a sketch with Judy Garland on the program tonight. Oh, with Judy? The sketch? Well, I don't know. Well, what's the matter? Something go wrong? Well, not exactly. You see, I contacted Judy yesterday to rehearse and... Oh, let's forget it. No, what happened? What happened? Oh, it's not important. Judy's a good kid and all that, but... Well, what happened? What happened? What happened? I wanted Judy to do a scene with me tonight, so I called her at her studio. Naturally, I was anxious to work with her. I don't know, she's so talented. Hello, Metro Goldwyn Mayor? Yes? I'd like to talk to Miss Garland, please. Judy Garland. I'm sorry, but I'm not allowed to disturb her. She's on the set. Oh, it'll be perfectly all right. I'm an old friend of hers. Oh, but why didn't you say so, Mr. Rooney? <laughs> I said an old friend, not a short one. <laughs> this is this is Jack Benny. Whose friend did you say you were? Jack Benny. I mean, I'm Jack Benny. I'm nobody's friend. I mean, I'm a friend of Miss Garland. Jack Garland. I mean, Judy Garland. <laughs> My goodness, what trouble you go through to get someone at a studio. And... Oh, you're Jack Benny? Yes. Well, gee, I'm sorry I infringed on your nickel. <laughs> I'll give you the set. Thanks. Uh, one moment, please. I'm a fine operator. I'd have gotten better service if I dialed a coffee grinder. <laughs> Hello, stage three. I'd like to speak to Miss Garland, please. Okay, I'll... Oh, would you hold the line a minute? She's going to shoot a scene right now. I'll wait. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. We're rolling. 
I wonder how long I'll have to wait. All right, Miss Garland, start talking as you open the door. Action. Oh, Robert. Robert, darling. What an action. What pathos. Robert, my love. What feeling? Who's Robert? <laughs> oh, Robert, darling, kiss me. It's been so long since I've seen you. Kiss me, Robert. Don't speak, just kiss me. Mmm, gee. Kiss me again, darling. Oh, boy, that was a long one. <laughs> Robert, kiss me again to make up for all the time we've been separated. Mm. Mm. Oh, my darling, just once more. Mm. <laughs> Very good, Miss Garland. Very good. Miss mm. uh, Garland, woman on the telephone. Oh, thank you. Hello? Hello? Hello, who's calling? Tell me, who's calling? I can't. My lips are stuck in the mouthpiece. <laughs> I said, I... It's all right now. <laughs> Judy. Uh, Judy, I'd like to ask you a little favor. Would you... Just a minute. Who is this? Uh, can't you guess? Well, really, I haven't the slightest idea. Oh, come on, guess. Well, uh... I'll give you a hint. Who used to have the dressing room next to yours? Oh, hello, Rosalind. <laughs> I'm not Rosalind Russell. Look, Rosalind's dressing room was on one side of yours. Now, who was on the other side? That was the washroom. <laughs> Only part of it. <laughs> Judy, uh, Judy, this is Jack Benny. Oh, Jack, how are you? I'm fine, Judy. And I called you Yes, to... I know, Jack. I'm awfully sorry, but I had to buy my Christmas cards from somebody else this year. <laughs> I'm not calling about that. Now, uh, listen, listen, Judy, the reason I called you, you see, I'm going to be on the mail call program with you tomorrow. Yes. And I thought as long as fate had thrown us together, <laughs> I thought that maybe we could do a scene from your picture for me and my gal. Oh, but, Jack, I don't remember any part in that picture that fits you. Oh, sure, Judy. You know, the man you're in love with. Well, yes, I know, but that part was played by Gene Kelly, and he's only 28 years old. What difference is five or six years? <laughs> I can make up to look as old as him. Really, I can. <laughs> Look, Judy. Well, all right, Jack. You come over to my house tonight at 8 o'clock and we'll run through the scene. Okay, see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, Judy, shall I come for dinner? Oh, well, some other time. <laughs> oh, boy. Am I going to show Judy how to do a love scene? Well, Judy, here I am. Hope I haven't kept you waiting. But, Jack, you were supposed to be here at 8 o'clock. Well, but what time is it now? <laughs> it's only 5.30. Oh. Well, I only live two miles from here, and I guess I ran faster than I thought. <laughs> anyway, I was kind of anxious to get started with the rehearsal, you know. All right, Jack, come on in. We'll rehearse now. Good. You have the script here, haven't you, Judy? Oh, yes, yes, I have. And I've selected one scene which I think will be ideal for both of us. Oh, you mean the parts are equally important? Isn't yes. It? It's the part where Josephine is in love with Albert, but Albert wants to leave me and run away with an opera singer. Uh-huh. And so as the scene opens, Josephine pleads with Albert not to go. I see. And I'm Albert. Well, I should rather be Josephine. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, Albert, Albert's all right. I'll, I'll be Albert. All right. Now, let's take it from the top of the page here. You have the first line. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Albert, I'm going, Josephine. Don't read, Albert. That's your name. <laughs> Just read the line. Oh, oh, yes. Excuse me. I'm so nervous. Yes. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I'm going, Josephine. 
Don't go, Albert. You must listen to me. When I first saw you, I didn't care what you did. I didn't love you then. I didn't care whether you lived or died or what happened to you. I didn't care if I ever saw you again. And then... And then suddenly I felt it burning within me that meant only one thing, Albert. I loved you. I'm going, Josephine. (laughs) Oh, Albert. Albert, before I met you, life held no happiness for me. And just as I decided to end it all, I saw you. You, Albert, you. You were lonely and unhappy, too. Together I thought that someday we'd follow the trail to a paradise. But no. You rose above me. You found other things. Because the things I could give you were only love, respect, and unselfishness. I'm going, Josephine. (laughs) Yes, Albert. True love and respect and unselfishness that have crowded my heart for years. But you don't want that. No, you don't want the good, important things of life. For this, I went to bed early last night. I never thought I would plead for any man's love. But I'm trying to save you, Albert. Save you from yourself. Save you from this woman's ego who's only who's only luring you to satisfy herself. I'm a-going, Josie. I'm a-going. Jack, read that right. Well, I'm tired of saying it the same way. It gets monotonous. Fine part I've got. Well, you've got a very dramatic speech coming up. It's on the next page. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I didn't see it. Uh, Give me the lead to it, uh, will you, Judy? All right. Oh, Albert, tell me the truth. What caused this change in you? Why are you leaving me for this opera singer? I'll tell you why, Josephine. And I won't hold back anything, no matter how it hurts. I will admit that at one time I loved you. Loved you with all the passion and fury within me. But now this other woman has come into my life. And even though I have fought against it with every fiber of my manly body, I knew that eventually... Oh, Jack, Jack, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's awful. Why? What's the matter? Well, you can't play at a scene like that. You've got to put more fire into it, more feeling, more heart. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sure I can do it, Judy. Let's try it once more. Give me the lead again, will you? Okay. Tell me, Albert, why are you leaving me for this opera singer? <laughs> I'll tell you why, Josephine. And I won't hold anything back, no matter how it hurts. <laughs> oh, Love you with all the passion and fury within me. <laughs> and now this other woman has come into my life. And... No, no, please stop. What's the matter now? Oh, you've got the wrong idea of the part. We can't go on a mail call program like this and make fools of ourselves. But, gee... I told you to feel the part, not step on it. (laughs) Well, I don't know, Judy. What what would you suggest? Well, now, Jack, look. Uh, you, You go home and study it, and then we'll try it again. And if it turns out all right, we'll do it. And if not, let's just forget the whole thing. Well, that's what happened, fellas. But Judy was only kidding. She thinks I'm wonderful. Of course I do, Jack. You see? I knew I was wonderful. <laughs> Say, Judy, how about doing a song for the boys now? I'd love to, Jack. Do you think they'd like Speak Low? Anything you sing, baby. All right. Oh, you see, 
about time to put the sincerely yours to this mail call letter. But before that happens, here's a special paragraph for all you men who hail from that great prairie state, Illinois. One tiny pinpoint of land alone would have made the state of Illinois everlastingly famous. That was a spot in Springfield, in the midst of a wilderness of log cabins where the great American, Abraham Lincoln, spent his childhood. Yet, in addition to being the home of history-making Americans, this prairie state, from its beginning as part of the Northwest Territory, gave promise of greatness, a promise fulfilled. One of the three top states in agriculture, a great producer of iron and steel, the hub of the meatpacking industry. That's that hunk of land stretching from Winnebago to Cairo, from Lake Michigan to the Mississippi. That's Illinois. From one who belongs himself to all the rest of you who belong to these words of tribute. That's it, fellas. The end of another mail call letter. Signatures include Jack Benny, Judy Garland, Johnny Mercer, Elvia Allman, the Delta Rhythm Boys, Master Sergeant Skinny Ennis, and the OTC Band, and yours truly, Harry Bonzell. This program was arranged with the cooperation of the Hollywood Victory Committee. Another mail call will be coming your way the next time you hear... Mail Call is produced by the Armed Forces Radio Service.